Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Padeska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to this episode of Thrive, how to design your co-tour brand with my guest, Aisha Bell. Aisha Bell is one of the world's premier brand experts and creative directors whose specialization is in helping fashion brands scale to epic proportions. The work Aisha has done with her clients has landed them on international high-profile platforms such as CNN Television, British Vogue, and Marie Claire Magazine. On today's episode, Aisha shares with us the importance of having an editorial eye when considering your brand visuals to get the attention of influencers and why you won't even be considered if your brand is not polished. Aisha also talks to us about her own story of finding her brand voice and her lane and how when she really discovered what her specialization was, her business took off. Aisha also tells us the specific things that we need to have in place on our websites in order to have a high-end visual brand presence. Aisha is really a high-end expert that is paving the way for fashion brands in the world. I hope you enjoy this episode of Thrive. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. I'm your host, Heather Paduska, and I help entrepreneurs become industry stars by teaching them how to command any stage and leverage their media opportunities. Today, you're in for 30 minutes of high-value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making a difference, and rocking their brands. And I could not be more excited than to have my special guest here today, Aisha Bell. Thank you so much for joining me, Aisha. (laughs) Aisha is a total rock star. Thank you. Aisha helped. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to read your bio so everybody can hear how fantastic you are. Okay. Aisha Bell helps women scale and expand their fashion brands to epic proportions. She's one of the leading creative directors in the in design world today. The work that she has done for clients has been showcased on television platforms and high-end magazines such as CNN, British Vogue, and Marie Claire Magazine. And her clients' products have been featured in airports and endorsed by celebrities. Her editorial eye for style and brand beautification is what sets her apart from your average designer. Aisha helps brands looking to reposition themselves onto higher platforms of visibility. In addition, she helps her clients become aware of resources they didn't even know they had, resulting in positive transformations toward their business's bottom line. Thank you so much for being here, Aisha. Thank you for having me. I am excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's let's get to it. How okay. did you how do you get in British Vogue, man? That was awesome. <laughs> Look, these opportunities, they're it's not, I don't seek them out. You know, it's kind of like they, these opportunities and these type of projects fall into my lap for whatever reason, people reach out to me and say, you are the person that I need to, uh, I need help with like rebranding my image or, you know, making a design. And so they just happen to be setting themselves up for a large stage. So a lot of these clients, they just happen. And I love the way that happens. Well, let's talk about that for a second because I I understand on the one hand that it happens because when you line up your your strengths and your yes. superpowers, then it happens. Yes. But it doesn't but it doesn't just happen. It doesn't mm-hmm. just happen to anybody. So what is it, Aisha, that you bring to the table that is so unique that draws these people to you? I have an editorial eye for design. Mm-hmm. I love style, I love fashion, and everything that I do or me and my team are creating, it has that aesthetic to it. So a portion of that happening is clients seeing that and they resonating with that. Um, Mm -hmm. They want to be seen on platforms like that. They want to look, you know, stylish or high end. And so they see that aesthetic within me. And so they reach out. Tell me what is what it means to have an editorial eye and how that's different from other kinds of design. So if, if somebody was like, I want that high end, but I don't really know what editorial means or what it looks like. 
editorial is really positioning you for like advertising. It's really if you're wanting to be um, have that magazine look like for example, I had a client where they weren't doing any of their, they were pulling a lot of stock photos for their website for a apparel brand. And I'm like, you guys cannot pull stock photography for your brand. You have to look like you are in a magazine because mm -hmm. um, you're selling clothes. So you need the branding to look consistent and it needs to look like people are flipping through a magazine looking at your website. So mm -hmm. when I mention editorial eye, that's what I'm referencing. Just being able ha to have that look like you belong on uh, in a magazine. Yeah, that is total tweetable. You, yeah. if, people, <laughs> if you're a fashion brand, your website needs to make people feel like they're flipping through a magazine. Yeah. 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 I mean, because people, you know, they right now they're, they use Pinterest, right? And they're, and they're using Instagram and they're pulling pictures from your website as wish list items. You know, mm -hmm. if you're selling apparel, you don't want them to pull stock photography. And we actually had the incident where a, a few customers thought that the brand sold the clothes that's on the model in the stock mm -hmm. photography. And Ooh. so the brand was like, no, we don't sell that. So it was like, want, want. You know, <laughs> it's like, whoa, it's yeah, not use cool. Use your own photography. So you have to think about your branding in that aspect as well. And so that's why, you know, I love the, the fact that I come with that editorial eye um, in regards to rebranding. So talk to me a little bit about your background in fashion because that. It, that is different. It is different from going to someone who might be making labels for a steakhouse, right? Right. So, right. so exactly. how, how did you develop that aesthetic? Well, I actually went to school for it. I went to school for fashion design and marketing. I thought I was going to be a fashion designer and it did not work out that way. What ended up happening was I was drawn more to the marketing aspect and the business aspect of fashion. And so my friends who were becoming fashion designers or stylists or makeup artists in that industry will always come to me um, for marketing and business advice. And so that's kind of where it led in that direction. So I kind of fell into it in that sense and I, I stuck with it and I started to refine who I was and, and who uh, were attracted to me and just really refining um, what I had to offer to, to the world. I love that. And that's something that I talk a lot about is refinement mm -hmm. because it's when you can really narrow your niche and, yeah. and when you really narrow and you know your lane, Yes. That's when you can start to do that refinement, right? Yeah. If you're all over the place, it's really hard to refine. And it and takes a while to get there sometimes. Right. You know, it's like you don't have it all together right away. Things happen on your journey that kind of is like, oh, okay, you have to get good at connecting the dots. And when you do that, that's kind of when you start to like pave your own lane. That's awesome. I love what you just said. So tell mm -hmm. me about a time where your dots were not connected and what that did to you, your business, your mindset. Oh, do we want to go there? Okay. So, you don't have to be specific, but just, you know, <laughs> what, maybe a well, better way. No, no, no. Yeah. That's good okay. because okay. I, I would say I wanted to uplevel myself. And so I teamed up with a business coach to take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so what ended up happening is I got with a business coach that told me, this is what you need to do that sells fast. And it took me away from what I was really good at. And I was just starting to sell things that just sold and it wasn't authentic to who I am. And so when I did that, my audience became confused. My audience became mixed with different types of people. And I'm like, okay, I know I don't need to serve this group of people. I need to get back to who I am authentically and start serving the people that I'm meant to serve. And so, you know, I went through that transition for a little while and it really confused me for a long time. And so um, I got back on track and now, you know, I'm able to serve who I'm meant to serve. So how did you get back on track? I, I would love you to 
to tell a little bit specifically how that felt to you because someone who's out there who is developing their brand might mm-hmm. feel that feeling of like I don't I feel like I'm all over the place and I know there's some place I know there's a lane for me but I don't quite know how to get back there so what did it feel what did it specifically feel like for you to get back in your lane or to find that lane again what did you do what were your strategies to do that my strategy was to not be with this coach anymore because I felt um, it wasn't aligned. And so once I felt that feeling, I said, okay, I can't, this person doesn't see it for me. I'm too close to my business to be objective like the way that I need to be. So I need to align myself with someone who's going to help me get to the next level and can look at my business objectively and say, okay, what you're doing is right. We just need to turn it up times 20. And so (laughs) once I was able to do that and find that person, the feeling came back. The fire came back. Mm -hmm. It was just a warm feeling. And I'm like, this is it. You just know that it's it. And you just Mm want to go, go, go. I think if you are trying something and it feels a little off and you still keep doing it, you're doing it without confidence and so you know now this time around I'm doing it with confidence it makes sense it's like oh yeah this is this is me times 20 and let's go that's right that's how it felt yeah I love that and it's really about feeling right it's really about having that internal feeling of a big Uh giant yes yeah and that warm feeling in your belly Mm -hmm. right and I also love what you said that you were you were able to crank up the volume right? So you didn't just have the feeling you were like, oh, okay, yay, I have this feeling. It's like, let's go, man, let's go. We've got the, now I can turn the volume There was no timidity about it, right? There was bold, 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 bold action that was being taken, and I was cool with that, and that's how I knew I was on the right track. Yeah, and so when you started shifting your business back to where you felt called and were aligned, what started happening? I started seeing everybody that I needed to help, like the exact people that I needed to help. And they were coming to me in like droves. They're like, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, There was no um, second guessing about who I needed to help. It was no second guessing. If I saw somebody and I knew they weren't right for me, I knew it right away. And it's like, no, I can't help you, but I can send you to somebody who can. I know who I'm supposed to be serving. So it was just very clear and my decision making um, was super decisive. So that's one of the ways that I, I really knew. Oh, I love that. And I like what you said too. You started, not only start, people started coming to you, but you started seeing more yeah. clearly <laughs> opportunities. You started seeing clients. Okay. Sh- yes, yeah. no, yeah. yes, yeah. no. And the other thing that I loved about what you said is that it was, it gave you this generous spirit yeah. that, this person isn't my client, mm-hmm. but they're your client. Have yeah. at it. And then you can refer back and forth. So it just, it, it's this great circle of abundance, yes. really. And when you really hone Absolutely. in. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about looking hot, okay. right? Looking hot with your brand and visually turning up the volume because you've got that volume, you've got that confidence volume <laughs> cranked right now, right? right? So you, you know your superpower, you know you can, pe- you can get people in major magazines, you can get them in airports, you know, are their products viable for those positions anyway? And what, what does someone need to do visually to really put that edge on it to, to make them crank up the visual volume? I always start with every client. I say, you know, we need to create the high end version of you. And Mm. that doesn't just mean up your prices. It doesn't, you know, just mean brand colors. It just means the whole, your whole story, what you look like, who are you authentically at your highest self? So we start there. We start digging into that, that place. So it's like, you know, what are you into? What are what do you stand for? What are your beliefs? Um, because this is going to filter through to your business. And that's kind of going to be like your Batman call to the people that you want to attract to your business. So you have to start with yourself first and kind of what you want to exude and um, authentically do it in that way. So I always start there. 
So how you want to be positioned and showing up as the best version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's where I would yeah. start. And do you find that your clients know what they want already and they just don't know how to visually represent it? Or do you, yes. is it, do you, they, know. they do. They have a hint. Um, they will come to me and say, I have no idea, you know, about whatever. And then once I start asking them questions, because I'm not telling them anything, I'm asking them questions to get things out of them. Um, mm -hmm. They'll, it'll be like a monologue. They know, like once you get the fire going, they know how they want to be represented. Um, they know what they stand for. They know what they believe in. They know, you know, visually what they're attracted to. So, um, once we get the ball rolling with that asking questions, then, you know, that's, that's when a faucet turns on as far as. <laughs> yeah. Know. So, and I, what, when you're saying that, what I'm hearing is that your clients are not complete beginners. They, they it's no. not that they have no, no sense. They've been in the game for a while. They've mm -hmm. seen things that worked and had not worked. Some of them have local publicity, but they know they want to get to a national level, even um, international level. Mm -hmm. um, they just don't know what they look like at that level. Yeah, so, and I love that. Yeah, because that's, that's what I help my clients do is to get to that level of national platform, international platform with the way they articulate their message, with their personal appearance and all those things. And you do that with the visual branding. So yes. I know what that, that looks like, what things need to be adjusted for, for the platform in terms of the speaking and the media appearance. What specific things need to be jacked up in your visual branding to be viable for a British Vogue or CNN? Yeah. Like what do they look for and what, how can we start to incorporate that in our brands? They're looking for consistency in your branding. So if you have photos on your website or videos, are they consistently, um, you know, branded in the way that, you know, you should be branded. They don't want to see any inconsistency because it shows that the, um, the business owner is unsure. Mm -hmm. So the editor might say, well, they're not at that level yet. Like I just watched a documentary on um, Bergdorf and um, the store in New York and the buyer from the store was scouting uh, designers to put into the store and these people really want to be put in the store and she had to tell this group of designers said you know we'll keep watching you you're almost there but you're not quite there but you're on our our watch list that's the same with 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 um, press they they might start following you on Instagram they might start liking your stuff they may not like you but um, they're they'll start watching you and you want to start to be able to show consistency in your branding. That's in your colors, that's in your how you do your videos, that's how, in your photography, how you're talking to the people on your website, like how you're talking to your website visitors. Um, they want to see that across the board, even on your social media. That shows that there's you are set in your foundation and you know who you are. And so they are excited to feature you in on their ma their major platforms. Yeah, that's awesome. And what I hear you saying is it's not their job to figure out who you are. It's your no, job to tell not. them who you are. Yes. Yeah. To you show have up. to have yourself together at a certain point where they feel confident where there's like, oh, they do, you know, we're excited about you. We're going to send you, you know, some, some press. We're going to let people know about you because you have it together. Right. And I, I, I'm actually just going to be doing some writing and some talking about this more. But the big question is when opportunity knocks, are you ready? Yeah. You, you can't yes. get ready. When the, when the knock comes, it's not like, oh, I've got to go yeah. get my brand. You know, you've got to be ready. You've got to show yeah. up ready. And a lot of clients come to me in that state of panic. They know they're about to get written up. Like maybe the editor was saying, oh, we want to do, you know, maybe a feature or we want to get your opinion on a group you know, on a group article or something like that. So they know that press is coming and they know the audience behind that press is coming. So they'll come to me and say, I've got to get my bloop together <laughs> and I need you to make me look the part so that when we do get this influx of traffic, influx of media, that I'm ready. I'm ready for the stage. So I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but how long does it take if someone is like, I need this? I need this, whatever it is, a website. Re I suppose it depends on what they need, but what, what yeah. would be a time, like what would be a reasonable timeline to get them Vogue ready? 
Um, I always start with their website because that's where people can reach you the fastest and, and everybody can't come to you in person. So the fastest way that people can reach you is your website. So I always start with the website revamp or if you don't have a website at all, then I create that. And that takes about two months to create that depending on the complexity of the project. But um, yeah, I always start there um, because that's where people are coming to you or meeting you first. And then we start maybe with your social media presence because they're checking out your Instagram, they're checking out your Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And so we want to get you together on that platform as well. Anywhere where it's immediate. Yeah. So do you help people with timeline planning? If, like, like if, if they wanted to get in Marie Claire, one of, you know, mm -hmm. one of the bigger platforms, do you backwards engineer a strategy for yes. their so yes, talk if to me they, a bit about that. Yeah, if they know that they are getting featured, you know, I had a client that said they were about to be featured on Oprah's uh what is her I forgot that list that she does, favorite things or something oh, like yeah, that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we know that's done in December. And so we kind of start um at towards the beginning of the year because it's like we want to get your website together we want to make sure that your marketing materials are together we kind of like take that we know that date we kind of work backwards from there so we create uh, a brand calendar mm. of, um, i love that that's awesome yeah. yeah we create a brand calendar because when you're featured on there it doesn't stop there. You're going to get, you know, booked for other things. So you want to be ready if you have to go to a trade show, if you have to go to um, another interview that's piggybacking off of this major interview or major um, press that you got. Mm -hmm. So you want to be ready for the after effect. Right. Well. Right. And you have to have the back end ready as well. Yes, absolutely. You know, a lot of people go on Oprah and they're like, yes. And then they're yes. like, because yeah. they don't have they don't have it set up right. They can, I think it can that happened to. I think if I'm correct, I think that happened to um, Sarah Blakely at, at Spanx. She uh -huh. was getting ready to be featured on Oprah, and there was a lot of things on her website that was not ready, mm -hmm. and she was scrambling like it was a major scramble to get everything together. So you don't want to be in that place of high pressure. You kind of want to be. If you know when you're going to be featured, you kind of want to plan ahead as much as possible. Yeah. So what what are the main things, you know, you said she was scrambling to get certain things on her website. What would be like a top three list of things that absolutely have to be in place? To well, if you're selling product, you want to make sure your shopping cart is working first. <laughs> because <laughs> I've, I've been in a situation where, you know, the, the person just got press and maybe they just reached out to me and their shopping cart was a mess. And so there's interest in your product, but people can't buy from you or it's hard to buy from you. So if it becomes hard to buy from you, I don't want to buy from you. I'm just going to look at you and like, oh, you're not ready for my business anyway. I'm leaving. Right. But people are not going to wait for you to get your shopping cart together. So right. um, first thing, make sure you can get paid. So set the system. Hey, hey. <laughs> make set sure you can get paid. That. Yeah. Right. And then secondly, you know, just make sure, you know, with your website, you know, get your photography done because press will be pulling pictures off of your website to feature in their magazines on their TV shows like Entertainment Tonight or something like that. They will be pulling those photos. So um, make sure that is in order. Make sure that your videos are there. Um, and just make sure the navigation process of your website makes sense and that it is um, intuitive. So if somebody goes to your website, it makes sense for them to go to this next tab and this next tab. So you don't want it all over the place because people won't know what to do. So I think the first thing is like definitely make sure that your homepage is um, can be easily taken in, you know, make what sure your picture is there. So yeah, make sure your picture is featured at, at the top. Make sure you have a good opt-in to collect email addresses mm -hmm. because even when people come to your website, they may not buy right away, but they do want to come back to your website. So you need to make sure that you have some type of opt-in um, to into your website. So for example, if you are an apparel brand, maybe your opt-in could be a 20% off coupon or mm -hmm. voucher or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so there's an exchange there where you can get the person's email address and sell to them later on or keep selling to them, you know, long after they left your website. So that's an important thing to have on your website. And just make sure that, you know, you don't have too much content on your website. I, I despise websites that are wordy. It's like, 
I don't feel like reading. Like I want to look at what you're, you know, unless it's like you, if you're We're busy. a busy people. coach. Yeah, but, yeah. but even then people are busy, you know. Yeah. You don't have time, especially on the home page, right? You don't have time yeah. all the time to just jump in and read the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, we have yeah. some we have a guest that wants to join us. Would you be game for letting sure. Ms. Sherry Rollin join us? Hi everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show. There's still more great content to come, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about a new course I've created called Close Any Room. You may have noticed that all of my guests know how to speak about their businesses in a clear and compelling way. But that's something a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. And it's something you need to know how to do so you can convert your audience into more sales. And that's why I've created this course. It's a six week audio course to teach you how to craft a signature talk so that you can authentically give value and close more of your audience from the stage. In the class, you learn how to create a clear and compelling point of view, how to organize your content and give great value to your audience without giving away the farm, how to structure your talk so that it seamlessly closes your audience at the end without feeling salesy. And I also give you templates and instructions how to create marketing materials, a speaker sheet, and all kinds of sign-up sheets when you're giving your talks. And finally, what everybody's hot to know, I also give you tips and resources on how to find speaking gigs. It's an all-inclusive course so that you can start closing and selling more from the stage. And as my free gift to you for tuning into the podcast, I'm giving you my free webinar, also called Close Any Room, and you can listen to it at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. And it will give you lots of tips and information to get you started on how to create that signature talk that sells. Okay, we're going to get back to the show now. There's still more great content to come. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Okay, rock on, sister. Let's see if we if, if Blab Blab's gonna come through. Hello. Oh my gosh! Hey. I love the glasses. <laughs> yes, I love them. Hi. Did you? Did you? Sorry, I'm driving. Oh my <laughs> word! Are you drive? Are you behind the wheel of the car? <laughs> Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm oh, okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> but I saw you were on. I wanted to. Did you? Yes. you want to ask? Do you want to ask Miss Aisha Bell a question about how to create a couture fashion brand? Um. Well, she does it from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust anybody else with my style. There you go. Her. Yeah, she has such a yeah, such a good style. style. I'd rather her do it yeah, that. you have such a good style. Like you could just like look at her glasses, right? That is Sherry. Like she's just a stylish woman, and I love working with women like that, where it's just like she's totally expressive. So, yeah, that's awesome. So that's one thing I love that you pointed out the glasses to have some brand signature, right? A brand yeah. signature look, yeah. or we talk in in. A verbiage we talk about sound bites or having your platform or having you know your quotes or any of those things but when you're um or or you're a brand color right i use a lot of red yeah. in my branding so having some signature thing that people people can hook on to yeah so, and that's your brand color right sherry the the glasses that you're wearing yeah teal is always awesome. a color but I, sh I had a question about you about the photography. You you said something. I was like, wow, that I didn't know that. That when you get big press opportunities, that they actually pull the pictures from your website. Yeah, you they want to. Yeah, I learned that actually from Amy Flurry, who has the book Recipe for Press. Mm -hmm. She was a, um, a a magazine editor, and so she was the one actually pulling for stories for people, and so. She, in her book, was mentioning that you have to make it easy for them to pull photos from you. It needs to be high-resolution photos. It needs to show you in your best light, and it doesn't need to be stock photos at all. It needs to be a, a photo that's totally representative of your brand. Wow. So they do it all the time. 
Wow, I didn't know. I didn't know that. I thought you know you they call there are people called your people and then yeah. Sometimes it's not enough time. Yeah, they are like crazy deadlines. So they know that you want press. They they ask you. They're saying, okay, we're going to do this press on you, and it's real quick. There's no like back and forth sometimes, and so you have to be ready for those intense moments of opportunity. So. Um, yeah. That is a hot tip. That is a hot mm -hmm. tip, everybody. You have to have yeah. high res photos on your website because high opportunity press will pull right from your website. So you cannot yes. have you and your dog on your yeah. website unless you are a dog <laughs> groomer, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Unless that's your dog. brand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, what was the other thing that you said that I was going to ask you about? Oh, my goodness, I have the lawn people here that are. Can you hear the lawn mowers in the background? Yeah. Um, oh, I know what it was. It was what is you said to have like a twenty percent discount coupon as an example of an opt-in for a fashion brand. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a fashion brand, if you're a coach or some other kind of business, what are some of the hot? For, I just read this question on online somewhere else. People want to know what are hot opt-ins right now. Like what are what kinds of things make a hot opt-in right now? You know the best piece of advice for that is ask your audience. Mm. It's better to not guess and say, oh, you know, put this ebook up here. And you know what? Somebody, they may not even be interested in it. Mm. What you need to do is find out what they're always asking you questions on. Um, maybe what they're always talking about on your social media platforms and your fan pages and things like that. They'll tell you, or you can just flat out ask them, what do you want to learn more about from me? Mm. And when they tell you that, go to work creating this uh, opt-in. Okay, that's a great that's a great thing. I didn't know if there was something like some people like quizzes, some people like it depends. You, what does yeah. it pull your audience? They will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. So um what if oh bye Sherry. Oh we lost this. It must it must have been the car that was driving. Okay. So, <laughs> so I would love for you to tell us um, some examples of maybe some people that you've worked for that you could, we could go look at the work that you've done or brands that you think are nailing it right now that would that would give our our listeners a, a sense of what they're shooting for or what they should be shooting for because I know that's something that you also do is do a lot of critiquing of brands and showing what's what's working and what's not working so if someone said I really okay. want to up level but what would be a good example Okay, so I came across this brand the other day and fell in love with them. Um, it's called, let me look it up real quick. Oh, here, let's get Sherry back here and see if I can. <laughs> okay, I'm it's, here. Called, it's called beardbrand.com. I'm so in love with this brand right now because... Did you just type I, it in the chat? No, but I will. Okay. Um, let me go back. I use Safari, so I'm just like trying to go back and forth here. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi, Sherry. Hey. Okay, so I put the, the I put the URL in the chat. Cool. So it's called Beard, Beard Brand, and basically what they do is they sell like beard smell good stuff for men. <laughs> and so, it's like you would think it's so boring. It's like okay, what are, what are like, they like mice growing in? <laughs> <laughs> what, what they did was, was so cool is like if you go to their website their photography is amazing it makes you want to buy it um their instagram they feature men with like cool looking beards not even like crazy looking beards but just like cool like nice beards and they have this brand aesthetic that's going on that it just makes you want to be a part of it. It's like, I'm not a man. I don't have a beard. Like, but I really love looking at what they're doing. Their Instagram. I would say look at their Instagram and see how they're interacting with their audience and see the, the type of photography that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, because they have a certain aesthetic. You know, the way that they have their photos taken, the filters that they use, they use the same ones for, for pretty much in the, all their photos that they use. So... Um, it's really good. So that's a good example to look at. They've all, they've been featured in Esquire, Shark Tank, Men's Journal, New York Times, and on Yahoo. So they're ready, you know, they're ready for that press. So that's a good example um, to go by. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So we're kind of getting towards the end and I, I have okay. just about two more, well, three more questions, quick, 
question, one quick question, okay. and then two yeah. more thoughtful questions. Okay. The quick question is, you've talked a lot about photography, and I'm a really big believer in photography, and that's one of the things I help people with is to get ready for photography because it's so important. Yeah. Um, but how do you vet a photographer so you know? I mean, you, you're so good at research. How do you vet people, or how, what do you, what kind of questions should you be asking the photographer to know that they're going to give you what you want? I don't ask questions. Um, I no, but it's serious. Like, I I go to the like if I go to their website, yeah. Like I'm scouting for photographers. I just look at their work and I get an internal feeling and in saying yes. Like if I get a resounding yes, yeah. By looking at their work, then it's like okay, I know I want to work with them. Then you can ask the question second, like okay, you know, how does your process like all the boring stuff. Ask that second, but you kind of want to go for the what you feel that is resonating with you the most. That I've always awesome. found work that way um, with, you know, working with photographers and even videographers. It's like, I want my videos to look like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm contacting you. That's awesome. That was an awesome response. So mm -hmm. um, what was I going to say? That um <sighs> I don't I remember, but it was it was so important about the photography to do that. Yeah. And, oh, I know what it was. We've come full circle because mm -hmm. we were talking about having that feeling right at the very beginning of our conversation today of following your gut when yeah. it comes to your business, when yeah. it comes to your brand, when it comes to your photography. It's that that hot and cold game you played when you were a kid. You know, if it yeah. feels like constriction, yeah. if you feel constriction, it's not right. Run. Yeah. Run, run, yeah. run. I mean, and, I'm intuitively led. Yeah. And so that's how I'm, you know, able to, like, I do it with my own brand. It's, that's right. It's, I, I look for photographers that I feel resonate with me or videographers that resonate with me. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, artistically what I'm, you know, um, matched up to. So, yeah. Well, the beauty of that is when it resonates with you, right, you're lit up inside that's mm -hmm. going to light your audience up too. Yeah. It's yeah. going to show on your video. It's going to show on your photos. It's going to, you're not going to take boring photos. Right. So that, that's how that works in that way. That's awesome. Okay. Two last questions. Okay. Um, we, um, you are a rock star for sure in your <laughs> field. And we've talked a lot about turning up the volume on your brand in your business. So mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? What does a star look like to you? What does an industry star look like to you? Yeah. What does that mean? Somebody, to me, an industry star looks like somebody who is growing an influence of people. And it's not even just about the crowd. It's really about how they are making the crowd feel. It's not like just faceless people. It's people that are just gung-ho for them. And an example of that is like a Lady Gaga. Like mm -hmm. all of her fans are like mini Lady Gagas. And mm -hmm. so how they respond to you and if they respond to you like that in, in large enough numbers, it's like, okay, this is somebody to pay attention to. Their tribe loves the hell out of them. And so <laughs> that's one of the things that I always notice first, especially when I'm looking at, okay, who do I want to work with? Um, or people who are, are wanting to work with me is kind of like, you know, I'm kind of looking at how people are responding to you already. Yeah, I love it. I'm tweeting that. Brand star, <laughs> someone who makes their audience feel something, right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, last question. Okay. What are you today, just today? It can, be, uh -huh. it can be more than today, but today the answer. What are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for a clear vision. Mm. Um, Amen. <laughs> well, I mean, I say that because I'm not wasting any, any time doing what I want to do. I'm very decisive in what I want to do. I have a very clear vision and I'm finding the A players creating my team to help me support that vision. So I'm very blessed for that because a lot of people don't have it. And I've been at a point where I hadn't had it and I was all over the plate. So I'm very thankful for that because now that's going to draw in more of the people that's like me. That's right. A lot of the brands that's like me. So, yeah. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm very thankful for you. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. your talent. I appreciate your heart. And I appreciate your leadership, Aisha, in, in really stepping up and, and showing up as a brand star yourself in your industry because you have the talent. 
you have the drive, you have the knowledge, you have the heart, and you're taking the bull by the horns. And I really appreciate you do that, doing that and showing us the way and being a resource for people who value the power of the visual brand, baby. So mm -hmm. I really acknowledge you for that. So thank you for thank being you. my guest here. And thank you, Sherry, for joining us too. And I want to thank, thank you, all of you for being here. And <laughs> as my gift for you guys taking your time to be here and spending your 30 minutes with us, I want to gift you my free webinar on how you can become more of a brand star speaking from the stage. You can get that by going to clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room okay until next time shine bright ladies take care bye. bye hi everyone thank you so much for joining me for this episode of thrive i loved having you here i love having you as part of my community and if you're enjoying the show i would love it if you share it with your friends on twitter on facebook or wherever they're hanging out i also want to let you know you can leave me feedback or comments i love hearing from you just post those at heatherpodoska.com you can also leave suggestions for topics that you'd like to know more about or if there's someone you'd really like to see on the show let me know that as well okay until next time here's to hitting all your high notes take care bye bye